Hi everybody, my name is Marco Pacassoni from Italy and uh, welcome to the virtual PESIC 2021. Enjoy my Franken route. Thank you. 
A tribute to the music of Frank Zappa is something that would scare any musician away. What prompted you to accept this project? <laughs> You're true. <laughs> it all started when I met French producer Pierre Ritz, who contacted me to record an album he was producing. A splendid person who, among the harder qualities, had a deep and a rooted passion for Frank Zappa bordering on fanatism. For years he had dreamed of producing a record with Zappa's music that he loved, where the vibraphone would play a leading role. When he heard me to play, he felt that the realization of his dream was near. It was just a matter of introducing me to Zappa's music, which I knew very little about, and making me enjoy it. In order to tackle this difficult task, he used Ruth Underwood. He knew that I would inevitably be attracted to her, to her impeccable technique, to her sound, to her way of rendering the melodic lines clear and expressive, to her tuples up and down the keyboards. This is where my journey into Zap Universe began. However, Pear was sure that I could interpret that music from a privileged position because I had a fresh point of view and I wasn't influenced by all the literature that has been written so far about Zappa's life and music and the hundreds of tributes producing a special of his death. What was the, the impact with his music? <laughs> the truth is that a superficial approach to all of this would have been an artistic suicide. <laughs> In fact, Pierre forced me not only to listen to Zappa's essential discography, which is in any case double the complete discography of most of his contemporaries, but also to watch concert videos, interviews, and to read the most important publication of his life and music. I would suggest that any musician should dive into Zappa's music at some point, if he hasn't already done, so because there is something for everyone, from cabaret to the orchestra conducted by Pierre Boulez. According to Ruth herself, Zappas was terribly cynical about human affair. He was a completely workaholic and he him coexisted one of side the composer who writes everywhere as soon as he has the opportunity producing tonal of scores of properly recording and preserve it. And on the other, an unleashed, blasphemous and politically incorrect madman who roamed the evening on his own music, surrounded by a group of other madmen who had the suitable, subdued and trained. Perhaps an occurrence calculated dualism. I was more attracted to the composer rather than the performer. But discovering Varese and Stravinsky in his music was the element that definitely dragged me in. There are composers that I have loved since my days in his conservatory, and I also think that I directed a sagra for an exam at Berkeley Closet Music in Boston.
instead you were impressed by the performer Ruth Underwood in a contest of exceptional musician who supervised everyone and somehow forced them to a degree of extreme precision under the boss watch. <laughs> the first revelation was in fact to discover that Truth had a classical background like mine, even though she was a percussionist who didn't not improvise. If anyone said that Zappas played his musicians, is Ruth's case. She was probably his Sinclair before his time. And then I realized that everything that intrigued me, that music and in that fake improvisation was the result of a severe writing that Truth brought to life every evening with impeccable precision along with her smile and her grace. Through her, you heard what Zappa wanted to play but would never technically be able to do and Ball died in a beautiful woman who had become the priestess of his music. In the year that Truth was in the band, he was writing specifically for her. Zappa attracted so many musicians to his cult and many took somebody else's place in various roles every time, but Drew was impeccable, impossible. According to Zappa himself, there was no percussion in the world capable of doing everything she did. And I feel like adding and to memorize it all. <laughs> did she play everything by memory? <laughs> Everyone played everything by memory. And this is another similarity that I found between me and Zappa. My group and I never use scores in concerts, except on special occasions. Because to be able to tell it, you need to know a story in every single detail. Zappa required this, but in that case, it was a huge amount of music, obbligato, continuous changes of tempo, and all of this had to happen in the most natural and spontaneous ways possible. This required an enormous amount of dedication to the cause on the part of the adept musician who lived on his music, and that meant being in the best condition to be able to play his music at its best, sacrificing any kind of drugs which would inevitably tarnish their, their performance. Only limited amount of alcohol were tolerated. A commitment that lasted all day for months, hours and hours of rehearsal and coexistence culminating in concert that those who were lucky enough to see live were probably able to fully process them only years later. Nobody had ever heard anything like that and despite his music being very impactful. It was not completely accessible stuff to most people.
So, it's a bit as if you applied Ruth's technique, her fluidity on phrasing and her sound to your improvisation, isn't it? <laughs> I think I took a chance there because I ended up dedicating a piece to her where I tried to improvise for her and I hope she wouldn't mind. <laughs> In one piece, I played a Zappa guitar solo on the vibraphone and understood that it had been conceived by a guitarist who model modal scales on rhythm figures, but that in fact thinks like a percussionist. I like to think that my improvisation on Zappa's music were also influenced by Ruth, her smile and her joy combined with the professionalism of a Berliner, which she demonstrated in that important group of musicians being above all else to the Holland woman. In conclusion, <laughs> I can only add that I would love to meet her and to talk to her. I know that she received a copy of my Zappa album Frank and Ruth, but I didn't get any chance for a direct contact with her. I just hope she's fine and in good shape. And I say hello to her, I say hello to everyone, and uh, thank you again for inviting me in this virtual PASIC 2021, and uh, music is the best.